Welcome back to episode 5 in the Director of Football Challenge here in Calling IF, where the boys are about to go on winter break in our second season. We have played a total of 14 games that I have highlighted over here since the last episode. Six wins, four draws, and also four losses, with still four games to play down here in the preliminary phase, of course. Yes, let's take a look at some of these standout games. A 1-0 loss to Vidor, which is actually the last match we did play. And to be honest, maybe the worst game in terms of performance in the season. Horrible result against a pretty good opponent. Four shots, one on target. It, it, it isn't good. It, this is what's, uh, probably the worst performance of the season to me. Thankfully, there are also some good ones in there. This one is the biggest win so far and also a very good performance away from home against one of the teams that I think they are likely going to end up in the relegation. So, uh, or maybe even relegated directly. I don't know. But yeah, pretty good win here against uh, Hopo. 4 0 victory away from home. I absolutely like that one. And maybe the most interesting one is a 3 1 win against Suna Yusuke. This is actually the second time we win 3 1 against them in the league so far. But of course, this one is away from home, so it's a little bit more important against a, I would call them a direct rival to the league. They are third place, I think, right now, as well as locally. They are actually located not far from Colling as well. So. Yeah, this, this is probably the best of the bunch, I would say. Let's jump straight into the top three goals so far this season. Starting with NJ here, who had a solo raid and some really, really good dribbling skills here to put it in from a narrow angle. NJ is here, there and everywhere, this time as an assist maker for um, Del Hander over here that hits the repost and then get the goal. Yeah, lovely goal there. Last but not least, Ngongo with an absolutely fantastic header from a volley. First time volley here from NJ. Absolutely excellent goal. That is going to be the first spot for me. Looking at the table, we are currently sixth in the league with 28 points, as we can see over here, after 18 played. And with four to go in the preliminary phase, we are far from guaranteed a spot in the promotion group. But honestly, I think it's only Horsens that can actually catch us. They are the only one with, well, they got one point behind us. And yeah, I don't think HBR is going to get there with 20 points. So it, it looks okay, but we could also, it could be a case of us not being in it this season. In terms of the lineup and also the most used roles, we have Mosser in goal after his injuries, of course, Randolph, uh, Randolph as a wing back on the left-hand side, and Nathan Gale as the ball-playing defender on the left, Lyson as his marker on the normal central defender role on the right, and, of course, Flu, who has probably played the most games, I think, on the fullback role on the right. Talar as a halfback role, that, that's kind of interesting. And also, what I would call a classic summer, box-to-box -box further up, and also Tadessa as the Masiler in the midfield. In Jay as the left-winger, and very interesting... And I, yeah, I, I don't see this very often from, you know, the AI, but we have Ngongo as a white target forward on the right-hand side. And up top, it was mostly Carl in the pressing forward role. The standout players when it comes to the average rating is going to be Ngongo on 7.32, along with Flu on the 7.12 here. That's very, very good for a fullback, I would say. Also, very interesting of note, I'm, I'm not, yeah, some of these haven't really played enough for me to really, you know, consider them very important ratings here. Powell's super sub, 7.05, five goals in 12 subs and three starting. That's, that's definitely okay. And also Tadesi, uh, 16 games, five goals, four assists, 7.0. That is the four that I want to, you know, mention as very, very top average rating kind of guys. And when it comes to the points per game, I think we should mention Mark Del Hende here. Not really someone that our manager is rating very highly, but 2.35. That's a very high number for someone coming on. So I am very pleased with that. Also, Martin Powell's on 1.93 as the super sub, kind of securing those points when he's coming on as well as Del Hander here. And worth noting as well, Melte Snappe or Melte Snappe in Danish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he actually got us the points in the early stages of the season, didn't he? 1.8, I mean, I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. 
And last but not least, Jeppe Pedersen, also mostly used as a sub, but sometimes also playing 1.74. So a lot of subs is in here, and if we're looking at the one that is playing more often, it's Lesser Flu here on 1.7. So I think right now I would probably call Lesser Flu player of the season so far. Oliver Schmidt is set to be released at the end of his contract here in December, mainly to do with him being injury prone and also just very inconsistent in his performance. Along with when I tried to negotiate with him, he wanted 1.4k, which is way more than I am willing to give for someone that is this much injury. So he's gonna be gone. The same goes for Tonander. He is also gonna be released at the end of his contract here. But for a different reason, he is not really being used at all, right? We, we don't see our manager using him. We might as well get rid of him. And maybe we can use the wages from both of those players to find a much better winger for our manager to use. Also, Jeppe Pilsen's contract, he is on loan right now. His contract is running out at the end of December. I could consider bringing him in again if we can get another loan deal that is maybe an equal or thereabouts, uh, but we will see about that. But he is also maybe someone leaving us. Sebastian Sommer, on the other hand, his contract was running out and we decided to go get him a new contract here. Yeah, it's a bit of an upgrade. He is on 1.3 now, but I am very happy to have our captain for yet a couple, maybe two seasons more or something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just a very good way to do things when you have a captain like him and just keep him around. And I, I mean, 1.3 is not that high for someone like this. He's been very consistent. Again, 6.95 in average rating. I am very happy that he will be staying. I've already done a little bit of business already on the transfer market. We do have a goalkeeper coming in. We will take a look at him when he actually comes in. But yeah, a goalkeeper as a backup, I think we kind of needed that. And another one is this youngster here called Frederik Carlsen. He is actually already here and have been since November. He is a left fullback or right fullback, actually. He can, he can do both things. Um, so this one was a little bit more like, okay, well, he looked great. Let's bring him in. I can get him now for 250 wages. Sure, why not? Bring him in for a year's time and see how he develops. Yeah, so yeah, we do have an extra fullback in either areas now. I think he's just a bag up for choice in both places, basically. And a couple of other news happening here is the, well, board news. <laughs> we do have our first coaching course, so we will get our, what is it, B license? I think it's the B license. And yes, we do not really play as a manager, but if we are in to improve as a director of football, we do need a coaching course and we do need a couple of them probably. So this is the limitation of the game, but it is what it is, right? We need to improve as well as a DOF. Scouts allowed? Yes, we got that completed. We have one more scout. We'll take a look at them uh, or him. And also one more coaching staff member allowed. So that is also very, very important. So this is how the staff area is looking right about now. Let's take a look at the new... What, where is he? There he is, our new coach. And he is actually fairly good motivating. Uh, I actually set him up to be a fairly... He's going to handle some of the touchline stuff and stuff like that. So yeah, but just good to have an extra body in there. It was more to do with just training, I would say. But the guy we got was pretty good at motivating. So he's going to take care of those kinds of things on the pitch. And the new scout is basically like the other ones. 275 pounds. Fairly good. Is this the guy? Jack Fanson? Is that the guy? I'm so confused right now. It must be. Yeah, that is the guy. Why, why did he... So when I got him in, right, when I got him in, this is very strange to me. I was so confused here because when I got him in, he had 12 and 12 in judging player ability and also judging player potential. Apparently he got worse. I don't know how that's, I've never seen that before. Do you, have you ever seen that before? He was definitely better before, <laughs> but okay. Well, that's the new scout. That is, that is so strange. I've never seen that before, I don't think. Hmm. Another thing the board did was also give us a new contract running two years for 825. So very early on here, I would say they are actually offering us a new contract. We, of course, took it and I'm very happy with it. So we are probably going to be here for at least one more season after the one we are doing right now. A quick look in the squad planner here to get an idea of what we might aim to find in the January transfer and also what is going out and stuff like that. Let's get through it here. We got three decent goalkeepers, I think. Uh, at least I don't think we got 
anything we need to do here. We got Mosser as the first choice, and we got this guy coming in, which we will take a look at later on, and also Snapper as the third choice. No worries. That is... Bang. We're done. We're finished there. That's good. Let's take a look at the uh, left-hand side here on the fullback area. Randolph, he's been the first choice, and I think he's doing fairly well. Del Hende, not playing a lot. I thought he would be the first choice, but nah, not really. Very interesting with Ingvason. He's he's almost not playing at all but he is the third choice and maybe he's coming back later on in the season to do something and also we have that fourth choice carlson who could, could be playing as an inverted wing back over there so also that is perfectly fine lots of depth in that area and on the other side we have flu he's been probably the standout player this season so no problem better as a second choice and carlson as the third choice again no problems here i think um i'm, I'm pretty happy with where we are looking in the fullback areas uh, central defenders on the left hand side we got Nuthangel who has been fairly good I um, don't really have any complaints there and as the very good second option of course uh, on the other side we got Ly uh, Lyson as the first choice and Vetter as the second choice so again I think the back line is pretty solid we don't really need something it's only if we get two injuries to you know a spot there we actually need something but yeah, nah, I don't I don't think we need anything back there. And unless someone is sold, no, not at all. Defensive midfielder. This is this is where we might look for something. Now we got Talan, who has been perfectly fine in that halfback role. But uh, Isuna, I, I put him I put him off for transfer. And if he does go, if he's gonna go, I don't think we can rely on Viles Vest to be that player to come in as a second choice. I think we would need someone else if that does happen. We don't know. We'll see if it happens. Yeah. Midfielder. Now, this is probably where we do need a player. We do have Tedese. He's out with an injury for four weeks or something like that, which is probably fine. We can. He's coming back. And he's been okay. He's been okay, especially for the price tag. I think he's been really, really good, actually. Yeah, but Pilsen, we don't know if he's going to stay on another loan deal. We don't know if they even want him to be here. We will see what happens there. If he leaves us, we will definitely need another midfielder on the right-hand side. Preferably a Masila type, but it could also be just a normal central midfielder. On the left-hand side, we have Sommer and Vest. You know what? I, I mean, Sommer is just such a... He haven't had a single injury so far, so... Uh, and, and Vest as a second option. We could get something here, of course. We could improve here, but it's not necessarily something we need compared to the right-hand side, if peterson is gonna go so there is something maybe but unlikely i would say further up we got the wingers i think over here we are um well we we lose a couple of players right we do lose a couple of players we got nj which is the first cho choice right now 100 we got chonander who is leaving we got pillerson who is potentially leaving and he's not playing over here anyway so yeah not really a third choice they'll hinder i don't know if he actually have he started up there at any given time let's take a look at the form here no he's played as an yeah advanced playmaker yeah he did actually play two games up there okay so he could play up there as an advanced playmaker or white target forward maybe even and then we got Ingvarsson who's also coming back he, he actually had a really long injury uh, Ingvarsson and but he hasn't played at all right he hasn't used him like last season so at least at least not a lot so maybe there is something to be done here, but maybe more so on the right-hand side, because this is where we lose Oliver Smith. He's not going to be staying around. And in Gongo, as good as he has been, I don't think we can rely on him and Boston to be the guys that is going to bring us over the line. I think we do need something on the right winger. Not that I need to replace Ngongo, but I at least need a rival. I need a rival to Ngongo who maybe also possibly could play on the left-hand side. But I think we do need some improvements here. Up front, this is... I, I think I said this the last time as well. It, it's, it's a bit more of a question mark. Here's the thing. Marcel Karl, he was, like I said in the last episode, he was a gamble, and I don't think he paid off. Uh, he cost 1,500 in wages, right? And he is 15 games in, three goals, two assists, three XG... I don't think that's good enough. Yeah. And and it was a gamble, and I guess um, it, it isn't really paying out at all. Powell's, on the other hand, I think he is a very good super sub. He has been by far the best striker <laughs> compared to what, how much he has played. 
It doesn't show on the XG because a lot of his goals are, of course, from hitters with the jumping reason stuff. So that's kind of lying to us. I think he's very clinical. Five goals and 11 subs and one game played. That is more than good enough for me. Um, so he's fine. But Carl, yeah. But I think we might end up just playing with those two up there and not getting a new striker this season. It might be something we need to look for next season instead. So yeah, there it is. We um, If we sum this up, I think we need a winger, a rival winger to the other two. And then we definitely need a midfielder, more than likely. But it's not like we are going to have a massive change right here. I think we are probably looking for loan deals as well. Uh, more than likely loan deals. We could probably get some really good loan deals in. If we could get two to three loan deals on a couple of spots, I think we would be pretty solid for the remainder of the season. We are early out of the block this winter. It is only the 5th of December. They just went, all of our players went to the winter break and here he are. We did find a rival for Ngongo, a loan deal for a 16 year old from AGF called Jan Munk. And we are going to accept it. I already know that I, we are going to get him. So let's take a look at him. Is he very, very good? With that pace and that acceleration and agility, plus the finishing and first touch and dribbling, yes, he is. Also, the work rate is making sure that he's also going to do some of the pressuring that we need. He he is also been fairly decent in the non-competitive. And the other reason I'm taking this guy compared to someone else, I think this guy got a higher ceiling compared to what you think he got and also on a weight that we can actually afford because we do have some pressure on the finances side of this as well. So I think this will be a rival on the right-hand side as an inside forward. Also a very different profile to Ngungu. Ngungu is way more as that big, you know, winger sort of type, where this guy is definitely an inside forward who also got some goals in him. And what I also like is, I actually, he's not fully scouted, but I do, I do think we have enough to, to understand what he's all about. He doesn't seem to be an injury prone and he also seems to be okay consistent scoring goals and assists in the non-competitive that he played. So I'm fairly happy with this. Is he a massive deal? No, but as you can tell, there is definitely something about him with the uh, amount of value they are putting on him ATF. So I, I, um, I, I'm happy with this deal. 22nd of December, um, we got a massive signing here called Daniel Harbo. Oh, this is a good one. This is a tasty one. So, Jeppe Pilsen, the one guy that is kind of on a loan deal, he's not gonna be coming in again. So, I was definitely looking for another central midfielder, and this is the guy. This is 100% the guy. 1.1k in uh, wages, that is cheap. It's, it's even cheaper than the, uh, the, the, the loan deal guy. So we actually we actually don't even use as much as we did before. Important player, agreed playing time, right? Important player. And uh, not really anything worth of noting here in terms of bonuses. Um, I mean, appearance fee is 425, but 21, right? Let's just accept it because he's coming in 100%. He might be the best midfielder. He, he might be the best midfielder. He, yeah, this guy got a lot of potential. I think he could be even good enough to go up and play in the Superliga. Uh, this could be the guy that, you know, really do well for us if he keeps injury free and all of that. He, there is no concerns. I don't, uh, there is just nothing. There is no, nothing that really, I haven't, did I check his, uh, oh yeah, I did check. So he's coming from FC Copenhagen. Um, he played last, he hasn't really played this season. Uh, but last season he did play in non-competitive and also in the league in the second division and he did fairly well. But I think... In that year's time, he has developed a lot. I mean, these numbers look good. He is probably better than Summer as well. He is a kind of interesting player because he, he's like a mix of a central midfielder on attack, Masila, and also he got some numbers to play advanced playmaker, but he does lack the flair. So I think he's more of a central midfielder or even deep line playmaker. He, he, he's probably not as good going forward as he is just sitting in there and just doing central midfielder stuff. And, and I think he could potentially also be good enough to a box-to-box -box midfielder. Even more interesting is that he do also have a reasonable left foot, so he could also be playing on the left-hand side. That is fixing all of our problems in the midfield, I would say. Just straight up and also very cheap. He's going to be here for a year uh, until next winter, of course. Perfect. Just 
this this was probably the best yield we could have i don't think we would be able to get a bit of yield in this to be honest uh, he's even fairly determined right he got a team player first touch is really good he got all the things you want to see what what kind of uh what is he uh, oh fairly determined yeah that's saying it over here so yeah fairly determined personality as well like i said all the things you want to see on him so that is a very good signing for us. We got another signing here, but it is actually not for this season. <laughs> yeah, it's an end of contract kind of thing. It is a youngster running out of a contract and yeah, he will be getting in in, in the summer. But we can look at him anyway, because we do know pretty much everything about him. 450 wages, breakthrough prospects. So yeah, it's one of those deals that he's probably going to be, you know, fourth option. He is a central defender and he is this good. Maybe you consider him not good, but I think he is probably going to be fine on 450 wages. He is also reasonable left footed, which is one of the reasons I did take him. His consistency is the only worry here and maybe his technique. But uh, I think for that price tag, I will take a chance on a Danish player, 20 years old. No, 19. He's 19. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a risk here. I think he is good enough for the, you know, backup third, fourth choice in either left or right hand side of our defense next season. The transfer window is now officially open. And we do get Jan Mongen. We already looked at him. But more importantly, the backup goalkeeper. Let's take a look at him. Andreas Vandela. He looks very good. He's gonna he's gonna be here for only six months, which is fine by me. Um, as a backup, we might be looking for someone else next season, or I don't know. We, we'll see. He doesn't like the big matches, which is not great, but he is a backup, so I, I mean, I guess that's okay. Let's actually compare him. But I mean, as a backup, I think he is a very good backup. Let's check out where we are standing here. Yeah, I mean, he is almost as good as Musser right uh, in some areas even better in aerial and communication but as a backup he is very very good i might have I'm, i might have we, maybe we didn't need someone this good maybe we could have gone a little bit less and maybe you know bring in someone on 600 wages instead but oh, I, I went in and actually got someone who yeah we just have two really good goalkeepers here now for the rest of the season but we are not done quite yet we have another future signing he is called calvin gustina also one of those that are running out of contract and i was like i had him on my shortlist for quite a while and i was like yeah let's uh let's bring him in then so 1.2k squad player he is a central midfielder i mean it's it's quite a lot of money for a youngster here but i think he's good enough we're gonna accept it let's take a quick look at him I think we have the full report actually or almost the full report so that is how he looks very good physicals very good mentals overall he's more of a d-line playmaker than anything but he had done let's see how he did in the uh he came from the um, den hagen academy here he seems to be doing quite all right in the non-competitive down there so uh, i hope he will be a good addition next season to our midfield so i'm, I'm making a couple of uh, of signings where we get them for free that is a little bit higher quality than what we could probably get if we just waited until the end of the season so i am kind of spending some of our wage budget already now for the next season but uh, is this gonna is this guy gonna be a starter i don't think so i think he's probably gonna be second choice on the left uh, right hand side but um it's also a very different profile compared to what we have already. So yeah, it's uh, again, he's, and he is a youngster. Where's he from? What is that? What is that country? Well, cow is that over near Puerto Rico or where is that? I don't actually know where that is. I have no idea. I don't remember that name. It must be in the, <laughs> you just no idea. But anyway, that is a, another player coming in to the summer transfers. With our new backup goalkeeper in place, we can let Snapper go down a league to the division below us with Fram to get a bit more experience on a loan deal. We have another future signing, GB Sec, a 20-year-old winger. He's coming in into uh, the summer transfer or in the summer transfer. 1.1k squad player. And I also see him as a squad player, but let's take a look at him. He's um, he's very fast, very rapid. And he do have the dribbling and the finishing and the first touch to be an inside forward. He is uh, right-footed, so he will cut in. You know, all the good stuff here. So another of those kinds of signings. He's probably a little... Let's check up on... See if we compare him to NJ here. Yeah, just slightly worse than NJ, but of course... 
there is a difference in years uh, how old they are so yeah it's uh, probably gonna be a backup to nj next season so uh, pretty happy with that one as well transfer deadline has passed it is the first of february and i do believe we have done fairly well we of course got the three guys that we brought in that is coming in in the summer but more importantly maybe right now we do have vettler and also monk uh, coming in to kind of help us throughout the remainder of the season and when it comes to that i think we are gonna wait with these four games in the the last four games in the preliminary phase here until next time until the next episode why reasons reasons <laughs> so i guess i guess we will just go over to the club info screen and you know what it's gonna be it for today and Next time, we will see where we end up in after the split and then also the remainder of the season, depending on where we are ending up. It's going to be a little bit interesting because it's not automatic we are going to be in that promotion at all. Uh, a promotion group, that is. Uh, it, could, it could go wrong, but uh, well, you need to see that next time, I guess. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you around next time.